So now the next thing that I've added into the game is just uh, short sounds, which means every time we press spacebar, we get a noise being played just to make the game a bit more interesting. So I'm going to stop that. And you can see what I've done is I just put that inside the Flappy Bird sprite and I've just put a uh, the sound of a drum being played for a short space of time and that gives us just that every time the space key is pressed it plays a sound makes the game a bit more interesting just another thing which have been added are the clouds so some of the idea of the pipes each cloud has got I've created two different cloud sprites each one has got three different costumes one two and three and the scripts for that is basically just saying when the game starts I'm setting the cloud to hide so it can't be seen I'm waiting for five seconds and then I run the repeat loop 1000 times and I could have done the same idea with the pipes and done a clone but I just wanted to show how the repeat loop works so we've used a repeat loop so it's going to repeat this piece of code 1000 times and what this piece of code is doing inside the repeat loop it's, switch, it's uh, choosing a costume or switching costume to pick a random between one to three Again, this just means it's going to be random, it's not going to be the same cloud all the time. It's going to select a random value for 1, 2 or 3, which is going to change how the cloud actually looks. Go back 10 layers, which is going to move the clouds to the back of the screen. Uh, this was added in because sometimes the clouds are going over the top of Flap of the Bird, so I've just done that just to make sure that the clouds are always at the back. And then I'm telling the cloud that I want it to go to X300, which is towards the right hand side of the screen. And then for y I've used again pick random uh, between 0 and 200 so it's going to pick a random value in the y axis between 0 and 200 which is between but here and here and the idea of that is just so that it's the clouds aren't going to cross in exactly the same way um, all the time there's slightly different heights to make it a bit more interesting then I'm setting the, the cloud to show and then what I've used to move the cloud from the right hand side to the left hand side of the screen again I could have used the glide function we used earlier but what I've said to do is use the repeat function uh, repeat loop and inside that I'm saying I'm going to run the repeat loop 500 times and changing the value of x by and picking a random value between minus 1 to minus 3 and the idea of this is just that it will move across the screen at different speeds obviously minus 1 will be the slowest and minus 3 will be slightly quicker again it's just to make the clouds look a bit more random and so it's not the exact same cloud all the time going at the same speed so you can see these two clouds are now going at different different speeds just to make it a little bit more interesting just stop that for a second and then once I've done that I just duplicated this sprite and the only thing that I've removed is the wait 5 so this this cloud starts coming as soon as the game starts wait for 5 seconds and then the other cloud starts coming so around about the time the pipe comes out the next cloud should come out as well So that's the only thing different between those two. And the next thing that I want to add to the game, if you notice, now whenever we actually fly into the, the pipe, nothing really happens, the game just stops, which isn't great. You might want to try to improve it. So again, what we're going to have to do is go to the Flappy Bird sprite, and we're going to have to use the piece of code or the script which relates to the bird hitting the pipe, which is whenever sprite 1 is touching sprite 2. So it's this one, forever, or sorry, when the game starts, forever if, the bird sprite, sprite 1, is touching sprite 2, then stop all, so I'm going to pause, stop all just for a second. And what I'd want to happen is probably the bird to fall down the ways, and maybe for it to spin around. So again, I'm going to use the repeat loop, and I'm going to get it to spin around. So again, I'm going to go to motion, I'm going to turn anti-clockwise, and let's just see what that looks like whenever it hits the pipe. We can change the value of degrees obviously to make it spin around faster or slower. The game's not going to stop this time. As you can see it just makes it spin around. So that's probably okay in terms of the spin. And then what I need to do is I need to make it actually fall to the bottom of the screen. So again there's a few different ways we could do that. We could do the glide function or um, change the value of y. But what I'm going to do is just going to change the value of gravity. Because as we know gravity is the main sort of variable we've created to control the kind of height of the bird in the game. So I'm going to go to data and I'm going to change the value of gravity. I'm going to use set gravity too. So it's going to repeat this and I'm going to change it. Let's try if I change it to two just to see what happens. So 
So now you should spin around and start falling down the screen. So it does, but not an awful lot. So what I might want to do is change the value of that. Let's try 10, see what that's like. I want to change it enough so that this repeat loop actually makes it hit the ground because the ground, if it's touching the colour brown, which is here anyway, uh, the game's going to stop. So what it does do enough to make it hit the ground, but I'm just wondering, can I actually fly up again if I actually touch the pipe? So you can see it potentially might be able to actually fly back up the ways again. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to change the value again to higher. So change the value of gravity to 20. And what should happen now is it falls fast enough for it to definitely hit the ground and there's no way that the user can press spacebar and get it back up again before it actually hits the ground. Which means also I don't need this stop all in here anymore because this piece of code is making sure that the bird actually hits the brown section at the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to delete that. And now this means let's run through at the top just to make sure that the value of gravity is correct. Again, this could be in your game might be slightly more slightly less. Yeah, that's definitely enough in my game to actually make the bird hit the ground. So that's a quick guide to show you how you can add in some clouds to make the game look a bit more realistic, make it look like the bird is actually moving across the screen and to get sound playing when the bird's actually when the space key is pressed and to make it look like the bird is actually falling to the ground each time it hits the pipe. There's again there's loads of different ways of doing that.